Good morning. Good morning. <coughs> Welcome, small flock, to our service today and one online. Welcome to them, too. Uh, glad that they're watching. Well, we are going to have something special for you today. Uh, two speakers who are graduates of our college here. And uh, before we do, I'd like to uh, just make a few announcements. We just started our school year. This year, uh, we had in our first year class, uh, we have over 20 students, which is pretty good. We have had a small, you know, around a dozen or so. Our very first year, of course, we had seven. But, uh, hey, we had, uh, you know, the following year we had 19. That was when we first started. But so if we get just in first year, well, not that 19, both freshmen and second year associates and bachelors, but we had over 20 to come uh, this year to our first year class, and then we've got uh, it's over 20 people in the master's class. Wait, wait, everybody that says they're coming comes, it'll be about 23. About 23 people. We and uh, we did have the bachelor's class, and this yeah. was it's so nine, nine people came, but there are three people that couldn't, four people that couldn't come. So we've got about 13 people in the bachelor's class. Which is about normal for some reason. So uh, 50 some people, and uh, we're averaging about 50 some people every year, which is good. And uh, we'd like to see it grow. So tell your friends about it. You know, one of the best ways to get anything to grow is word of mouth. So tell the people that you know about the college, especially if it's been a blessing to you. If it has been a blessing to you, then tell people about the school. Uh, we have one gentleman who thinks it, it helped his marriage. He says he knows it helped his marriage and home life. He tells all kinds of people about school and sending his students. And, uh, this is the fellow that's gone all the way through. So uh, we're, we're glad to see God working. Yes, sir? It's too late to sign up for school this year, is it? Which year? Which year? Masters? No, uh, so. Oh, uh, yeah, pretty late now. Yeah. Well, you know, I did see tech went out. A lot of guys up in school. Yeah. Well, school well we recorded the first two nights mm -hmm. live stream, and then Terry, and then you recorded the, the Tuesday night. I, did you record the Tuesday night? We we've had three we've classes. Had three well, we've only had three classes. How many people are talking to you? Uh, several people are not here. Oh, yeah. But they would have to be here. This Monday. This Monday, the campus is going to find us. So tell them. Call them today and say, you'd like to be in the Bible College. So we see it's a lot of veterans that went to that school because they were getting their uh, veterans out there. Yeah, but yeah, with way. our tuition as low as it is, it's still going to be. Well, yeah. we, we didn't qualify for um, GI Bill benefits because no. we're not federally accredited. Because we tried to go through that process to get approved for GI Bill benefits. And they wouldn't do that. We had to have, have the federal government. Most most Bible colleges go through uh, eight, uh, accrediting agencies that are Christian in orientation. If you go through a federal accrediting agency, then you can't teach against homosexuality, abortion. Uh, you can't teach against. You can't preach the Bible. In other words, they can tell you what you can teach, what yeah. you can't teach. Yeah, and and they strip your accreditation. It's like it's been done. It happened at Bob Jones University. Yeah, it happened at Bob Jones because the federal government disagreed with their doctrine. So that's why Bible colleges, Christian colleges, will use Christian accrediting agencies. And they check out to make sure you're teaching the fundamentals. They allow a lot of people to be you got to check that you're teaching the fundamentals. Anyway, I'm going to sit out here, but uh, I can sit down. What was I getting ready to say? Um, we are talking about students. Oh, something special today. We have two special speakers for you today. And uh, I just want to share a little bit about the beginning of the school year, too, and how good that's going. God is blessing. God's hand is on it. And there's a, we have some excited students our first year of coming here to learn the Word of God, so that's exciting. So let's ask God's blessing, and then we'll have our first speaker today. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this day. We ask your blessing upon the day and everyone who is here and watching by Internet. We ask your blessing and your anointing on the speakers and on the hearing today. Bless us and thank you, God, for sending Jesus Christ into the world. Help us to focus our attentions on Him, to keep our mind on Him, and to emphasize Him in our personal lives and as we 
set an example for others to see what Christians should be like. Let us be like those perfect Christians that you want us to be. Help us to live for Jesus Christ every day. And bless this service in Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Amen. Without further ado, I'd like to present uh, I think both of these men have doctoral degrees. Right? Yeah. Okay. So our first speaker today will be uh, the indefatigable Dr. <laughs> Tracy Swordell. <laughs> joy 
And when we weren't able to do it, he went to the cross. We put nails into his hands. We even took a spear and shoved it up into his heart to make sure that he was done for. And then he rose for us to be able to give us some form of freedom. To be able to say, hey, here you are. Yeah, you know what, I think I have heard of something that's maybe a little bit more unfair than the cost of student loans. But today I really want to define a little bit more about freedom to ourselves. I think where everyone kind of goes wrong is that they really don't look at a moral authority when they're defining these words. Okay. I can't say I know where Hillary, Barack, Trump, where a North Korean leader finds their moral authority. Well, I know where they get it, but I know where I should get mine. So, our moral authority is where we find our solid principles and we establish our values based on these, where we get our commitments, where we find where our actions should be and where our beliefs are. So let's take a look and see. Obviously, in our moral authority, the de definition of freedom should be in there somewhere, right? So if you go to John 8, 31 to 32 with me. Okay, I'm just going to read to you. And then said Jesus unto those Jews which believe on him, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set, shall make you free. So, let's break this down. Jesus, and what he said, was that if you hold to my teachings, you're my disciples. That's how you're his disciples. Hold to his teachings. What did he teach? He taught God's laws. He taught them verbally. He taught them in action. He taught them to us. He also taught us how to love God through following those laws. He taught us how to love each other, not in the ways in which the world's going to tell us to love each other, but in doing God's laws. That's how we love each other. He's teaching us that the law and the word of God are one. And that knowing the truth, the truth sets you free. Not the culture we live in of the world. Not that of men. Not that of government. Most people want to say, well, I have a First Amendment right to be able to do this, say what I want, when I want to say it. That's the world's. That wasn't God's view. There's a lot of discipline behind freedom. Okay. Doing a, a, a true set of freedom, it, it sets you free from the bondage of addictions and destructive behavior. So you have to have discipline. God's laws help us determine what's right and wrong for ourselves and towards each other. It also allows us to enjoy, have clear conscience, have deep relationships, and have a full life. Freedom is a result, not a birthright. It is the result of your commitments to following the wisdom of God to be Jesus' disciple. God's given us a lot of privilege with this. And we can kind of read a little bit of this in Romans 6.22, if you want to turn there with me. But now being made free from sin and become the servants of God, that ye have your fruit unto the holiness, the ends of everlasting life. So we've been made free by what Jesus gave to us. But what's it say? We're the servants of God. 
It doesn't say, do what, do what you want to do. Now that you've been made free, you are servants of God, to follow his will, his, his way. But to do that, reading on, there's everlasting life, there's a reward that comes with it. You can turn to Romans 8.2 with me. Most of us will just get page over. For the law of the Spirit of the life in Christ Jesus hath made us free from the law of sin and death. The world will provide you sin and death. It will provide you temptation, not truth. Following Jesus and being his disciples will give you freedom. What's next then? If you can follow me, James um, 1, 25, please. But thou so looketh unto perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein. He being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. There's reward, there's comfort when it comes to actually following the truth. Because the truth sets you free. It doesn't bring you on bondage. That's actually what the world will provide for you. And just a little bit over, you're going to find in two in James two twelve. So speak at ye, and so do, as it is, as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty, or otherwise known as the Ten Commandments. Where do you get your definition of freedom? Interesting enough, I'm going to tie this into hope, something I've just been studying. That's for an entire sermon itself. But I thought it was very interesting because, you, again, if you have that culture on your television or out in public, what you find is they define hope as a wish. As a, well, I hope that there's going to be some change. Well, I hope things will be different. Well, I hope they change their mind. Hope is not a wish. Hope is knowledge in what you're concentrating on, what your focus is. If your hope is here, this is your direction, what you're concentrating on, what your soul and your spirit are focused on, that's hope. And it's knowledge in what you're focused on. Aristotle said he once described our challenge as a problem of fish and water. Knowing nothing but life and water, the fish never realizes it's wet. Come out of, out of, out of any kind of culture, there's going to be some culture shock. It's going to be looked at as being different. All right, because guess what? You can't change the world. Often people in, in my position, uh, people come to me and say, hey, I want to be the next leader. Can you teach me how to be the next leader? Will you help mentor me? Sure, but I'm going to give you your first employee. You ready? Yourself. If you can't, Manage yourself. You really aren't ready to manage anyone else. Okay, you gotta direct this person first. Okay? And let me tell you, they kick, they scream, they act out, sometimes lazy, sometimes they have an attitude they don't want to show up on time. Mm -hmm. 
okay? Sometimes I want to make an excuse to do the wrong thing, but well, it's for a good reason. I want to give you purpose and a poor attitude. And they, over, they give you all sorts of objections you got to overcome. I guarantee it's the toughest employee to ever break. Let me tell you, when you have, when you figure this one out, boy, I tell you, leadership can be, much, can be a lot, it can be much, much easier. But you gotta step out of the culture and follow the great wisdom of my wife who <laughs> says, turn that TV off when I walk in. I just wanna focus on our world and controlling what is good for us. Thank you. Now, what can we control today in controlling our lives? Interesting, you're not a solution to the world but you are a solution within it. Because through your actions, people will see Jesus in their life. And they'll ask you, tell me, why are you happy? Now, this isn't the first time we've kind of figured this out before. Okay, I'm going to read you something. It might be familiar to some and if you haven't figured, if you don't figure it out by the time I'm finished on reading, I'll tell you where it came from. Okay. And they didn't have it perfect, but I think there's some great wisdom in this. When in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve their political bands, which have connected them with another, and to assume among the powers of the earth and the separate and equal station in which the laws of nature and of nature's God in capital G by the way entitle them and dissent respect of the opinions of mankind require that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and they are endowed by their Creator, capital C, with certain inalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I just quoted you the beginning of the Declaration of Independence. Okay. There does come a time when you've got to separate yourself from what our forefathers called bondage or the bands of others. Okay? Because you want to pursue what is natural law, the commandments of God, and the one who created those natural laws. By doing this, you pursue life, liberty, happiness. So that's what I ask you to do today. You know, kind of evaluate. Have, am I leading the, the greatest employee I'm ever going to have, the most challenging one? Am I within the world and the culture and grabbing a hold of their freedoms? You know, does demonstration mean to me to demonstrate through my actions or to demonstrate by setting things on fire and through making uh, uh, disruptive behavior? What kind of leader am I? And am I a disciple of Jesus? Do I define freedom as something where I can just do anything, anytime I want, to justify it by using an amendment? Or am I somebody who's going to say, by the laws of God, and I follow them, I'm set free to produce the ha to, to follow and get happiness from them. Thank you for your time today. I do want to go ahead and announce the next person coming up. Great. Um, and this, and there may be a show that goes on while he's presenting too. Uh, <laughs> beautiful. Okay. But I want to actually bring bring up somebody who uh, um, gives us the ability to be able to enjoy uh, life with him, and I appreciate him for that. Uh, this individual is very enlightening and likes to light up a room when he walks in. And I appreciate the fact that I can't remember I mean, ever having a negative day around me, which is great. So um, uh, I want to bring
be able to bring up uh, Dr. Eric. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tracy. Let the church say amen. We are children of God. Pray real quick, Lord, forgive me, Lord, of anything and everything I've done that's been, Father God, that's not to put you inside, Father God. Allow me to disappear, let me see you inside of me, Father God. The eyes will be open, the ears will be open, the heart will be open to receive the word from you, Father God. Let me pray now. Well, my brother Tracy, every time he brings the word, it seems like it comes together as one. It's amazing, but God knows what he's doing to his, for his children. My title is Being an Honorable Person. How do we become honorable persons? Through freedom, as my brother was talking about. This just comes together, everything he said. But the meaning is, well, the meaning for an honorable person, an honorable person is a one who believes in the truth and doing the right thing and to live to those things in high principles. Are you an honorable person in your life? Do you walk in the way that God wants you to walk? Or do you talk the way God has you to talk? Are you that person? Take a few seconds. And think about it. Make accountable of the things you have done in your life all the way up to today. What exactly is an honorable person? Consider an honorable person someone who is kind, has both dignity, dignity and grace, makes a honest living, is compassionate, reasonable for his or her actions, trustworthy, and keeps his promise in all things putting God first in all things and keeping his law in their heart, mind and soul forever and ever. That's what I think an honorable person is. Putting God first in everything. Letting God work inside their life. Not allowing anything to bother them. I know the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy it, but stand on God's word. And when that devil knocks on your door, you call on Jesus, and that devil has to can that person be you? Can that person be you? An honorable person. We think about that. We all come short of the glory of God. Not just me, not just you, but all of us. All of us has something going on. Somebody might cut us off. Somebody might do something towards our family or friends or curse you out. And just keep it on the down low. But we have to stand in God's word. That's all right. I love you, I'm going to pray for you, and keep on moving, my brothers and sisters. That makes you an honorable person. Not only that, we have to think about it. When these things happen, we have to call on the Lord. And ask him to remember you and have mercy upon your life. Yes, have mercy upon your life. To be the honorable person, Lord, take me as I am. Wash me while it's milk. Cleanse me when it was drinking. The stinking thing that is trying to come up, come upon me. Wash me of those, the thoughts and the deeds that I've done in my life. Why do I keep on doing these things? Let's rewind it. Let's start from the beginning. Let's think about Adam and Eve. But what does God say in his holy word? Let him transform your mind. For a new creature. Let him just change you, wash you while it's snow. Let him just take you like clay and mold you to the person that he wants you to be. Mm -hmm. Let's stop doing our things out. Stop it. Stop it. Second, just stop one second and ask the Lord, what do you want me to do? Not what can I do for you? That's trying to be honorable. That's trying to be the person that God has put you to be. Let's move on with this because it's getting deep inside. It's getting hot too. Brother! Brother, brother, <laughs> turn on the air now. <laughs> I was thinking about what you, what you said. You know what I'm saying? It's a blessing. I'm glad my brother is back. I'm glad he went to the doctor. He healed by the blood of Jesus. I'm glad when I walked in, he was sitting right there. So praise God. Keep him in your prayers. Not only him, but everybody inside this school, in this ministry, around the world. People in the jails, the prisons, the hospitals, the nursing homes, the battered shelters, the women. I can keep on going. Just pray for everybody. Because mm -hmm. somebody pray for you that you don't know. Amen? Amen. Call upon the Lord and ask him to remember you and 
have mercy upon your life. To be the honorable person, Lord, just make me clean. That's what you have to say. Thank you, Father God. I need you to help me. So you can be on the true, true tree of life. So you could be knowing without a question of doubt, I know where I'm going. So you won't fall short of his love. Knowing that God is going to intercept anything and everything that's trying to block you or take your blessings away from you. Because once you're on that tree, you're a part of God's family. You better remember this now. I'm telling you. I don't care where you at watching us inside this, this, this ministry inside this building, inside God's house, you got to realize that whatever you do, and you're a part of God's family, when you mess with me, you're messing with God, and God will work it out. And that's the truth. You have to realize this. Read the Holy Word. Read it. Okay. Uh, just give me more mercy, Father God, so I can stand strong. I can stand still and see your salvation. I can do whatever you want me to do. Because I'm going to do it for you with a smile on my face. I don't care what the evil one says. But that's your right. The days of dark will stay in the back of me. Because I'm pressing on to the prophet. Amen. I like that there. Let God know this right now. Oh Lord, please Lord, have mercy on me. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to be free from any and everything that will block your blessings and walk as an honorable person. Amen. Let us look in God's holy word. Let's go to Matthew 5, 44. When you're there, say amen. It's that spirit that's inside that person. 
We think about that person's all negative. Oh, that person, I hate that person. Don't hate that person. Hate that spirit that dwells in that person and pray for them. We got to think about them. It is not God's spirit that's in that person. It's that spirit of darkness. And the rest of our administration was the principality of the spirit. Amen. Yeah. You heard that? That's Dr. Key, brother. That rest of our oh, Lord, God, stop that. Remember that your honorable means that he is honorable to his boss, whether he is she, likes him or not. You can think of many things that you can describe all the re relevant
Amen. So let us not turn around from the word of God. Let us not turn around from what God is doing. Let me tell you something. It's only a test. The test is coming. We got to be ready. Look, I'm telling you, look at this here. And God says, but be be ready in season as well as out of season. Is that right, Doc? So therefore, if we're ready in season, out of season, so when these things come against you, you know what I'm saying? You can stand up, put your whole, put the shield up. And those fire dogs come against you, it's going to quit you. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be taken away. You don't have to worry about anything because you're a child of God. You have to think, my beloved, we want to be treated in a good way, a nice way, and a Christian way. Every day, every minute, every second, every hour. Because this is how I am. This is who I am. I am a Christian. I'm a child of God. I know no weapon formed against me should prosper. I know great is he that did me and see peace in this world. I know these things. I know that Jesus is sitting on the right hand side of God. Yes. And as long as I know these things, and he rose up from the grave, and he sent down the Holy Spirit for me, what else can happen to me? There'll be trials and tribulations. You know, there'll be prostituting us. That's right. To live for Christ is to die for Christ. I'm living for Christ. And if I have to die for Christ, I will die for him. It don't make a difference. Where you are right now sitting down, my brothers and sisters, you need to make a mo you need to make a, 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 a change your life. You need to ask God to come in to your life because you don't know what's going to happen to you. You don't know what time or how Jesus is coming down. You can't even be like those five women that don't have no oil on their and in their jars. You'll be lost. You'll be knocking and knocking and knocking. Come on now. Come on, we gotta think about this. Yes, sir. You'll be like, and I'll be saying, I'll be seeing you. You know, and I'll be going, hey, we're going to wait till you should have done it. I'll pray for you, but I'm not going to sit down and give you my oil. No. Oh, you're, 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 oh, no. You should have got it. Be ready. Be ready. Because we don't know what's going on. All we know is that we're going to the promised land. We'll be happy. There'll be no more sickness. There'll be no more death, no more hunger. We got to think about this thing. We'll be riding down. Well, we'll be riding down because we'll be in spirit. Or we might just want to walk on the yellow brick road. So, <laughs> come on, somebody. We got to think about this. We got to be truthful yes. with ourselves. Shall I be tormented all the days of my life in hell? Or when there was a fire? Fire never quenches, it never goes out. I stuck to me when God became a teacher. You never know. I said, Lord, I don't know. I know I'm not going down there. So just leave me. So it's going to be burning, burning. Now all you want to sit up there is just walk and listen to the word of God and be happy. And God is your life. There'll, there'll be never darkness inside there. Man, just think about this. You don't have to worry about anything. You'll be looking for Aunt Meg. She'll be right there. Brother Joe, he'll be up there. And y'all get together and have, ooh, have a good old time. I don't know about y'all, but I'm going to be there one day. Bradford, in Jesus' name. We need to walk in God's honor and not as flesh wants us to walk and talk. Even through our minds wanting to have us to be inside that darkness, our mind doesn't move. Our mind, that's the flesh. Going down to the flesh, telling us, come on, we can go over here. Nobody's looking. Nobody does look. Nobody's looking at you. Come on down. Let's go down to the party. Let's go down to the strip club. Let's go down to the booze joint. Let's go get a, you know, get a buzz somewhere. Look, I'm telling you, that's what your mind is telling you. But you know, you got to think about what would Jesus do? It's all right. I can be by myself. But I'm not old. I'm not alone. Because God is always with me. It's all right. Let him go have some fun. My fun day is over with. I have a changed mind. I'm walking in great. I'm happy. I'm it's sufficient for me. God's grace is sufficient. I don't need it to have a cookie outside, having all kinds of things going on, you know, talking loud, cursing, and all this other stuff. Man, I wonder. I can taste a little, you know, that's when your spirit comes up. It, it gives you a taste in your tongue. You either taste like you're smoking or drinking. or You know, that's what it is. Well, let me go and get a hamburger. Let me go get a friend. Once you get inside that scene, the devil is just right there. Come on up, buddy. And if one thing leads to another, another thing leads to another, then you're locked down. You're a doctor's failure. Until you repent and ask God to forgive you. We got to think about this. The flesh wants us to walk and talk that way. 
get into our mind, you know what I'm saying? If you keep treating that person kindly, even that person will have a change of heart. When those people start talking negative about you, don't worry about it. Give it to God. They have to change and keep on praying, praying for them. You have to remember God the Father cannot lie. God always honors his promise to his children. We are God's children. You got to remember that. They will live and respect us. They have to. Because anything that comes against God's children, God doesn't take out. Right. It's in his work. So if you don't believe me, you're not reading your word. Bottom line. I don't care what they say. You're not reading your word. Because God takes care of the children. And we are God's children. We are the blood covenant with Almighty God who created heaven and earth. Everything that you see, God created. God gave wisdom to men so they can create it, but God created it first. You got to understand that. God already knew what was going to happen. God already knew this creation was going to be made. So God, all right, I'll take it to you. I'll give it to you. But you got to realize this too. Think about Adam. You see, God didn't give Adam the choice. Well, I'm just going to give you something so you could name me Adam. You got to think about the Lord's word. God knew that Adam was going to take that and run with it. He said, I did. See, it's like, I did this stuff. And God doesn't get any glory. How can God get have no glory? And he did everything. But this is what man does. Man wants to create his own glory. You know, every time we do something, we always fall. But when we pray on it and ask God to show you and give you wisdom how to make these preparations, you always get blessed. You get blessed and blessed and blessed. But anytime we do it, what happens? We fall. We fall. We can't do anything else. Look at that, uh, Deuteronomy 20.10. It says, we are one in the sight of God. Now think about one. One. Now you are this thing, and next thing you are that thing. We are one in the sight of God. If you repent of the way, of darkness and be cleansed by the blood. You see, we are cleansed by the blood. Remember that song. It's nothing but the blood for me. One day I was lost. Jesus died on that cross. But it's nothing but the blood for me. I know it was the blood for me. It was never too late unless you die. It's never too late unless you die. Right now is the best time for you to ask and repent from your sins and believe this. Believe that Jesus died for your sins and rose. God rose us from the dead. Great. He's sitting on the right hand side of God. If you believe that in your heart, you know that you can be saved. But if you think that Jesus is still in that grave, you might as well forget about it. God rose to him. Remember that song. Remember the covenant is so real. So don't stop getting it. Get it, get it. Remember that? Don't stop getting it. Get it, get it. Get it right now. Get the love of God, the grace and mercy, Father God, that is going to give you. Feel the power of God. You will never have to shed your blood. Because the blood was shed for you, my brothers and sisters. The blood, you'll never shed a blood. You might shed a tear and ask God to help you. But you won't shed a blood right now. You'll never shed a blood. Because the blood has already been shed for you. To be free the blood was shed for you and for me on Calvary. That's a beautiful thing. He set us free on Calvary from unrighteousness. He set us free that you can see the miracles that's going on. It's not I, uh, you, uh, be lucky, or this or that. No, have a blessed day. You're blessed. God is going to move you from place to place. You don't have to worry about it. You know, this luck. I don't believe in luck. Some of us believe in luck. Remember the covenant is so real. So don't stop. Please, my brothers and sisters, please the blood of Jesus Christ. And the devil has to flee from you. He knows the name. That name is above every name. Remember your enemies. Remember your enemies and pray for them. Because God wants them to be exposed. 
but they don't want to be in a fold, that's not, that's not your problem. Your problem is you can't take them to heaven. You don't have a heaven or hell to put these people inside. So don't judge them. Just pray for them. Bless them and keep on going. Bless them. We're closing up right now. I know you're all ready to go. Have some, some, some lunch or something. But God has told me this. Where do you find your blessings? You find your blessings in the word of God. Standing on his word. Knowing and believing that these things shall come to pass. If you doubt not. When shall we pray? Pray without ceasing. Pray, don't stop praying. Get your praise on every day. Get your, while you listen to me, you should be praising God right now in your spirit. You know what I'm saying? Just think about it. Just praise him. The doc, Dr. Tracy was speaking, and, and that word was coming on, and I, I was just praising God. It was God getting so hot, I had to get me some water. Because the word is coming through him, and the word is penetrating, and it's coming upon me. And I know, I said, Lord, I'm so glad to be here. I'm so glad to be here to hear your word, to hear what's coming out from this man of God. You don't have to think about this positive. Don't come here well. I'm supposed to come here, pay my tithes, and don't pay my tithes, and just pay the work. Come here and expect things. Expect these things to come out of the men that are coming out, of the women that are coming out to believe the word of God. And Dr. Casey said, I'm just open. Whoever stands behind this, I'm just open. I want to be free. I want to be like the sponge that God asked me to be and just quench every positive thing that's inside me. I want to be like that. Oh, thank you. I want to be like that now and later. Eat some, save some for later. When I go down that road, I'm telling my wife she's tripping. I'm like, that is a let the church save, and we be just tripping. We'll be praising God, singing, and that's what it is. I need some for now and some for later. So therefore, it will save inside of my body. Then I can go out there and speak it to somebody and then somebody else. And this is what we need to do. We need to go out there and be the honorable man or woman. Go out there and tell them about the goodness of the Lord and what the Lord has done for me. On Calvary, oh man, that's a beautiful day. Set me free. Hallelujah. Amen. From these things. So closing off, just plead the blood of Jesus. Remember, Satan has to leave. Satan knows what's happened. And he has to flee from your life. Your wife's life, your husband's life, your children's life. Your, your, if you touch, you're touching and agreeing on some, he has to flee. Because you're speaking power, and power is in the word of God. That's the key in the body. He has to flee. No weapon formed against you. No what God says, no weapon. Hello. Formed against you shall prosper. And if you believe it's going to prosper, you know, then after you pray that something's going to happen, let me tell you, beloved, it's going to happen. Because you don't believe in your heart. It's going to happen. God's word says that. It's going to happen. If you just trust God. Just put it on the table. Here, this is yours, Lord. If you pray about something, just give it to him. And just walk away from it. I know it's hard. But let me tell you something. What do you want to live in? The light or the darkness? What do you want to live by? Faith or non-faith? What do you want to live in? The word? Or you want to live without the word? I'm going to have to live with the word. The word upon me. The word. When that's why I ask God, <coughs> let me disappear and let me see you in me. Every day I say, Lord, I want to do your will. What would you have me to do? Not what I want you to do. What did I need from you? Let me do what you want me to do. Let's keep this coming. We have to talk and walk in honor. Be that honorable person God has for you, regardless of anyone else. God bless you. Remember, we have to keep our overseer, but our overseer in the back there, he's just taking it easy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Of this, this beautiful ministry in college. Came up in prayer to college. If you have any questions, please feel free to email us. We'll take care of everything that we can take care of. But first of all, God will take care of it. And if He wants us to do whatever He wants us to do, we're going to do it. Any questions, please, please feel free to email us. Remember the people inside prison behind the bars, in the hospitals. I love you. God loves you first. We love you. We're going to pray for y'all, even if we don't know you. God bless you. 
Be blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Take us off the keeper right now with a smile on his face. The little church, amen. Enjoy those messages today. Enjoy it very much. Uh, I was sitting there back there taking uh, about a whole page of notes on these guys, but they're teaching them right now. So, and I've got something to read when I go home today. I can go back and study the scriptures again. And we're glad to have everybody here today. And, uh, pray for the ministry, pray for the work, for the outreach, for our radio ministry. We're still getting calls, people, you know, calling, asking for literature and things like that. And, in fact, I go home today, I'll check my messages because we have a program that comes on at 215, which I don't get here on Saturday mornings. So it covers a large area of town, so I'll check this one. Anyway, uh, glad to have everybody here. Are there any announcements that we need to make? Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. <clears throat> there's a friend of ours in, uh, in Covington, Uganda. It's um, uh, a Christian uh, children's home. Uh, they've been hit by a violent earthquake last night, and uh, mm -hmm. they don't. We don't. We haven't heard anything from the um, uh, gentleman that uh, runs the um, children's home. So if you'll just keep them in your prayers, we're trying mm -hmm. to figure out what's going on. And, you got a children's home. Yeah, children, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, they take the children that have like AIDS and um, a lot of um, bad kind of diseases, mm -hmm. and they teach them and they feed them and they um, they take care of them. Okay. And he's very um, devout Christian. Yeah. Um, we're just trying to figure out what's going on. Um, if I just pray on that. Uh, pray for the, the, the victims of that earthquake in Uganda, but this gentleman runs a children's home. Pray for the people there and the families. They'll find everybody that they're looking for, too, from this and pray for all that. Um, all right. We'll see you all next week. Say a prayer for me tonight, when, this afternoon, when you go home today. Just say a prayer for me that uh, the God will expedite his healing. I already had a long talk with him last morning. Okay. It was long enough. I said, now, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> you know, make it haste. Yeah. Dr. Keith, we do have a question. Oh, you got a question. Oh, okay. Willie, he said, what is the law of spirit versus the law of sin and death? Very good question. That's uh, Romans chapter 8 and verse 2. Never heard of it. Uh, <laughs> no, the question is, what's the difference between the law of the spirit and life in Christ Jesus and the law of sin and death? Mm -hmm. um, and it, it, there is some, amb some ambiguity in that because Paul did explain what he meant there. But if you read the whole context from chapter 7, verse 15, all the way down to about verse 4 of chapter 8, it talks about the fact he said it was a law that I sinned. Uh, verse, um, verses 22 through 25 of chapter 7, you got to get the context, you got to back up a few verses. He said, uh, you know, when I would do good, sin is present with me. So there's a law in my members, you know. I'm, I don't have my Bible right in front of me. He says, I'm about a day, no law in his members. Well, that's the law of sin and death. Not that God has a law, thou shalt sin. That's not it. But it's like gravity is a law. Gravity is an absolute. You can disagree with it, but if you drop something, it's going to fall. So people sin. It's just like it's a law. People do it. But Christ has delivered me from the law of sin and death through the law of the spirit of life. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of life. And so I think Tracy mentioned this in his sermon too. Uh, you, you know that because of Christ, we have that that liberty that God frees us from that that law of sin and death. Because Jesus Christ is our Redeemer and our Savior, He's freed us from it. Galatians three thirteen. We've been redeemed from the curse. The curse is the law of sin and death. But we can overcome that. I know there are people who say, "Well, I can't help. I was born that way." Uh, you know, but the people through Christ have overcome some of those things they think they're born with. And they can become a normal health. Any other questions on that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you all for coming. God bless everyone. And we'll see you all, hopefully, all of you again next week.